We're live. Hi, guys. Oh, my goodness. I've missed you so much. It is Feel Good Friday. How are you, my friends? It's been a minute since we have seen... <laughs> been a minute since we've seen each other so funny because i was having a conversation via um via messenger and the conversation is still happening and i can see it popping up over the screen so i can still see the comments <laughs> just funny it's just funny i have such funny friends it's and they always make me smile Susie says hello from eastern iowa hi stacia hi joan hi colleen Peggy. I love you, Peggy. Wendy's here. Brenda's here. So good to see everybody. You guys, I missed you. I didn't see you guys yesterday. Um, and we've got a couple things to talk about, but I do want to wait until we get a few more people in before we get really into all of the uh, information, because I do have information for all of you. Allergies are driving me crazy. How are you guys doing out there? I hope everybody is well, staying well and staying cool. I'm ready for the temperature to change. I was looking at the calendar today and the first day of fall isn't until like September 22nd, I think. And I'm like, oh my gosh, oh, why do we have to wait so long? <laughs> but even here in the South, even when the calendar says it's fall, it, it literally goes from summer to winter. There is no like gradual cool down, at least most years. So I don't even know why I bother. <laughs> why do I bother to complain? Why? <laughs> Hi, Ania. I missed you, too. I did. I missed you so much. Karen's here. Kathy's here. Cindy's here. I'm so glad to see you guys. I love spending my Fridays with you guys. Right? Colleen says, hurry up, October. That's the way I feel, too. Wanda. Wanda's here. <laughs> oh, all right. So it looks like people are coming on in. Got a few stragglers as always that's all right they can always catch up with whatever our housekeeping news as i always do a recap at the end so you won't for you won't miss out on anything all right so i got a couple of things to talk to you guys about before we get started with our feel good friday projects so first and foremost i apologize for not um for not being here yesterday <laughs> Uh, my apologies for that, but I'm going to make it up to you. I'm going to make it up to you because next week on Tuesday for our first live of the week, you guys, Sam will be here, right? That makes everything better, right? To have Sam here. So Sam will be here from Sam's Bead Shop. We'll be checking out his previous Sam's Bead Box and we're going to be putting together some really cool earrings. It's not a hard design, but it's a fun design. Just kind of a little twist on a design that we've actually done before. Um, but this little twist is, you know, all those little twists are always worth it. So look forward to that. Put that on your calendar. Set your reminders that Sam will be here next Tuesday. That's at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Really looking forward to that. So uh, Cindy says, I'm at work. I don't care. This is more important. <laughs> we won't tell on you. And we're so glad that you're here with us. My dog is tearing up a box as we speak. He actually has three boxes. He just can't decide which one he wants to chew on. So um, let's see. Uh, John says, at least many of us got to see Sarah on Wednesday. So really didn't lose out. Do you guys join me? Did some of you make it to my class, my Michael's class on Wednesday? It was an interesting class. Uh, we talked about using a bead board, which is something that we don't use here hardly at all. Um, and a part of the reason that I don't is just because you can't really see it when I lay it down. You can't see the full thing. However, if you're interested in learning how to use a bead board, if you've got one, but you don't really know how to read it accurately um, or how to design with it, they they always take my Michaels classes and put those on the Michaels YouTube channel. So you can watch that in replay. Um, for those of you who are interested in that kind of thing, I think there were a lot of good tips and tricks about using a beadboard. And, um, you know, it's, it's definitely something worth checking out if you didn't get to see it. Um, so that being said, I have another Michaels class tomorrow. So my Saturday class is tomorrow. That's at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We're doing a really unique design tomorrow. We are making a, 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 a necklace, but we are um, we're going to incorporate some memory wire, some bracelet size memory wire into the design. Now, the design might not be for everybody, but 
the most important part of the entire class, of course, is the inspiration and looking at things a little bit differently. I'm always one for turning designs and ideas and techniques and those kinds of things on their head. So using bracelet memory wire in a necklace design is definitely uh, a, a in that direction of thinking. So if you would like to join, come hang out with us. That's at 2 p.m. tomorrow. We've already got some grumpy faces. Who is grumpy on a Friday? How can you be grumpy on a Friday? Do you need a hug? <laughs> Group hug. All right. So the next thing I need to talk to you guys about is uh, you guys. So we still have our contest, the contest for the maker mixes. Let's talk about that for real, for just a second. So you have until September 6th to post your designs, right? So for those of you who maybe misunderstood the contest or who haven't heard about the contest yet, yet so here's how this goes. Uh, you purchase a maker mix from my shop, right? Those maker mixes, everybody's purchased those maker mixes and you have to create a design using one of the maker mixes that you have purchased and post it by September 6th, either in the design community group or over on the business page and make sure that you hashtag it with maker mixes. That way we can put your name in for a drawing to win a special goodie bag, right? It's going to be a bag. It's more than one thing. So I, I'm going to call it a bag. I don't know that it'll ship in a bag, but you know. Um, so the winner for that will be announced on September 10th. Guys, this was just our first run with that kind of contest. So now that we kind of know what we're doing, and I say we as in me and the team, because Colleen and Joan have really helped me out with this contest. Um, we're going to go forward and do a contest every single month. How does that feel? <laughs> how does that feel? What? No. How does <laughs> How does that make you feel? How does that sound? Does that sound okay with you guys? I love having contests and this is a great one. So basically once a month, we're going to do a maker mixes contest exactly the same way. So for the next contest, which is opening up right now. So all of the maker mixes that you see today that are available in the shop today or right now, okay, going forward, um, you want to buy a maker mix, right? create a piece of jewelry. And when you hashtag it, this time you need to hashtag it maker mixes September. That way we can keep all of the designs because Colleen puts together a really cool album for us so that we can see all of the, um, all of the entries. Uh, but make sure that you put maker mixes September so that you are entered into the September drawing, right? So if you entered into the August drawing, now you can enter into the September drawing with a new design. Um, the way this one will work and going forward will be, uh, you have from the first Friday of the month until the last Saturday of each month, and then we will announce our winners. So it's going to be a monthly thing. I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be fun. Gives everybody an opportunity to enter and, uh, to use those maker mixes because they're super cool. I've got four to show you today. Okay. One last thing. I know I've got a lot of talking going on, but I have one last thing that I want to tell you guys going forward. So next week is the uh, beginning of August. Okay. And I unfortunately am going to have to make a schedule change for my lives and I'm going to, I'm just going to lay it all out here for you guys so that you understand. First of all, I did mention uh, before that my schedule is kind of up and down. It, you know, I have, I, sometimes I have to, uh, cancel a live just because of some of the court things that are going on currently. Um, but once that's over with, we'll be back to a regular schedule. However, going forward, starting next week, there will no longer be Thursday lives. I'm so sorry. Like making this decision was one of the hardest decisions I've had to make in a long time regarding my business and regarding you guys. Um, I hate saying it out loud. Like, I hate that I have to say that. So I'm sorry, not August, September, you know, Sharon's like August. I'm sorry. <laughs> Next week is September, <laughs> not August. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thanks for calling me. I would have continued. I would have continued had it not been for you. Um, okay. So anyway, from going forward in September, <laughs> Now I feel like such a goof. <laughs> there will no longer be lives on Thursdays. Let me, let me just kind of explain. Let me explain. I know this is going to sound counterintuitive, but if I cancel my Thursday lives with you guys, that's actually going to open me up to do more things with you. 
I know, sounds counterintuitive, but understand that if there are no Thursday lives, that gives me more time to plan things like workshops because people have been asking me about workshops. So uh, online workshops, um, some extra fun things for you guys. Um, I have some things coming up in the works with Neelay Patel. I have things coming up in the works with Sam. I have things coming up in the works with Danielle Wicks. And all of these things, right, I'm going to have time to do those things. And they ultimately are for you guys, right? I'll be able to throw in surprise extra lives um, and all of that stuff. Wanda says, no, stop apologizing for having a life. But Wanda, this isn't really about having a life. This is actually about kind of do, being able to be open to doing more for you guys. Um, I don't know if you guys kind of realize what my schedule is. Um, I I do a live Monday at one, or no, I'm sorry, Tuesday at one, Tuesday at five. I sometimes have a Michael's class on Wednesdays. I have been doing a Thursday live and then I do a Friday live at one and then a Friday live at five and then a class on Saturdays. Guys, uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. So if I take one of those things away, it's not because I'm punishing you or I don't love you. It's so that I've got some extra time to plan even better things for you guys. Right. So going forward in September, we will, we'll have lives on Tuesdays. We'll have lives on, um, Fridays. And of course, I'll still have my Michaels classes going on and I'll have more time to do some other things. So Janelle says, I get it. You're good here. I know. I know. I just feel like I want you guys to, I don't want that. I don't want it to hurt our relationship, right? Because I know that you guys look forward to being with me and I look forward to being with you. And I don't want you to be like, I'm done with her because I make a schedule change like that. You know, and that's really and truly what I'm worried about. I just don't want you to go away. Um, but I, I definitely need more time to plan and focus on what we're doing so that we can do more. So, okay. All right. All right. I love you too. I love you too. So yeah, I just, it's just a reorganizing, right? It's just a reorganizing. That's all. All righty. So let's, let's talk. Let's talk. We've got four maker mixes. I can't wait to show you these. I love them. I'm so excited to show you these mixes. These will be going towards the September maker mixes. Um, design contest. And then of course, I've got four kits to show you as well. So buckle up. <laughs> we got a lot to cover. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Gonna change. Let's see. Going to the back camera. It's always tricky with StreamYard to do the back camera here. All right. And my tripod, did you guys see my, <laughs> my Michael's class right at the end? The tripod completely broke. It didn't break, but okay. Sorry, you guys. I, I apologize for my arm. I'm just trying to get you guys. All right. There we go. There we go. I, do, I wish I could lower you. Something is wrong with the tripod today. I just don't. It's from wherever I fixed it yesterday. Okay. So let's take a look. Let's take a look. All right. We're going to go with the maker mixes first, and then we'll go into the projects. Okay. I will go ahead and tell you that the projects are heavy on the pearls this week. And you're going to find that there are some pearls in our beautiful maker mixes. Not Well, yeah, there are some pearls in this one. All right. So this one is called Purple Passion. I'm going to lay it out for you so you can see it. So this one comes with a really cool, big uh, ring, a decorative ring, which I guess it looks like an O, but it really is just a decorative ring. But I mean, if your name has an O, hey, you're it's, it's good for you, right? There are these gorgeous kind of teardrop little shaped uh, gold spacer beads. This is my favorite. And these are these things are what I actually built the entire mix over. Uh, so this is a check glass bead that has this it's purple, it has this AB finish on the back. So either direction that it hangs but what's super cool about it is that it has a double hole right so you can you can attach something to it here and attach something to it here meaning it can be the focal centered or you can use it like this up and down and have a drop hanging from it there are some large purple 
they're, and they're swirly. They're not really just purple, but these awesome melon beads, right? There are some matte colored check glass in purple. There are some other check glass beads. And then these pearls I thought were just a the perfect little addition. So this one is Purple Passion. That's our make our first maker mix of the day. I'm gonna put all this back into my little container. Can I just shout out to Colleen for these containers? I'm so glad you convinced me to buy these. Guys, I got these little containers from the Dollar Tree. They're perfect. They're so perfect. You get like 12 of them. I love them. All right. So that was the first one. The second one, this one is, I uh, can't remember what I called this. I think I called this one Love Potion. So this one is super cool as well. I like this one because it has some little tiny baby pearls in it. There is also some vintage Chet glass hearts in here. There is a lock pendant. You see those little baby pearls? Look at those little three millimeter babies. I love them. There are some beautiful gold connectors, chat glass rounds, some tube beads as well. This is just a really beautiful, and then just a little pop of black with these little crystal facets. So this is the Love Potion Maker Mix. Super pretty, super pretty. There are some larger pearls in here as well, but I'm just obsessed with those little babies. Look how tiny. I love them. I love them. All right, so that's the Love Potion Maker Mix. Next up, oh, this is one of my favorites. This one is Honey Bee. You guys, look at the Chet Glass Honey Bee bead. So the Honey Bee bead, and it's not quite coming across on camera. So this is like a honey colored Chet Glass bead, but it also has like this purple shift to it. It's really, really interesting. Um, gorgeous Chet Glass bead. There are some vintage Chet Glass drops some crystal bicones, these honey colored check glass rounds that have that AB finish to them. There are some pops of purple in here as well. And uh, these check glass window beads, which I'm kind of a fan of these days. These are also that really pretty purple color. So that is the honey bee mix. So pretty, so, so pretty. I'm in love with the, with the bee beads. All right, next, or the last the last one, this one might be my favorite. It's hard to decide. This one is called Lucky Cat, and I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. So look at the little porcelain cats. So there are two little sassy porcelain cats. You've got a check glass kiwi bead. There are some black check glass window beads. There are some squash metal drops, some red check glass dies a round check glass tube bead, these rhinestone spacers. There are also melon beads, these little bicones. Look at those frosted bicones. I'm like obsessed. I'm obsessed. So this one is called Lucky Cat. This is the Lucky Cat Maker Mix, right? So all of these are in the shop ready for you to create with. All right. So I got all of those out. Now let's talk about projects, right? Jenna says, are these mixes deadline September 6th or are they for the September? Pro okay, so confused. So sorry, Jenna, I didn't mean to confuse anybody. So these new mixes and going forward, these are for September, okay? You can buy them now, but they're for the September contest. So just so everybody knows. All right. All right. Let's see. Mm, who are we looking for? Is somebody missing? Sharon says, I haven't seen her. Who are we looking for? Oh, Sam's here. I'm so glad Sarah likes pretty beads as much as I do. I do. And you guys, Sam and I are working on some beady goodness together. I can't wait. I can't wait. Sam's got, Sam's been pulling beads for me. <laughs> so my mixes and projects are about to up their game big time. And Danielle is also doing the same. So I've got, I have, I have friends in beady places. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. All right. So our first easy project for today is going to be a really pretty stringing project. I told you it's all about pearls today. So we're going to put together a really beautiful, simple, strong bracelet using some freshwater pearls and some blue lapis uh, chip beads. Now this bracelet actually comes in two uh, different ways, color ways. So there's the blue lapis and then there's also some pink rhodonite. So if you're feeling more pink than blue, 
you have that opportunity in the shop. So we're going to put this together. I'm going to just show you real quick and then we're going to move on because we've got four full projects to put together today. All right. And all of the kits, of course, have everything you need to put them together. So no worries there. Right. You don't have to have your own stuff. I've got it taken care of for you. All right. So I'm going to take my bead stringing wire and I am going to thread on whoops, a crimp tube to the end. And I am going to thread on a wire guardian. Okay. Now, before, before I do the crimp, I do want to thread my bead stringing wire back down through the wire guardian here. But before I string on the crimp or back down through the crimp, I want to go ahead and attach this to the clasp. I'm kind of obsessed with these clasps right now. Look at the, it's a spring ring clasp, which I normally do not like. I'm just going to be 100% with you. Like the small spring rings, I, I'm not a fan, but this big one is just absolutely beautiful. So I'm, I'm feeling the love for this one. Hold on, y'all. I got to, I got to pull up this picture because I want to be sure I do this. Got to be sure. Hold on. I want to pull up the picture. I just don't want to get this wrong. Okay. So <laughs> I, before I crimp, I want to thread this on to, that's what I was looking for. I didn't know if there was a jump ring in between here and there's not. So I'm going to thread that directly to my clasp. I'm going to take the bead stringing wire back down through. Oh no, I lost the tail end of my wire. Come back. This wire is slippery today. Just take that off of there. Come on now. That's why I love Feel Good Friday. It's super casual. It's totally okay if the wire wants to fuss with us. We'll just fuss right back with it, right? All right, let's try that again. Let's try to see if I can hold on to it. <laughs> the struggle is real today. Okay, pull it. I'm going to pull some more links here. That'll probably help. Kathy's running the page today. I saw Sam ask that question, but I couldn't. I, I wasn't sure if it was Kathy or Joan. It's hard to tell sometimes. All right, so. I have my wire guardian attached directly to my clasp. So there's no jump ring in between there, right? And I'm making sure that my bead stringing wire is running parallel within the crimp tube, that they are not crossing each other, right? Super important to make sure. And then I'm going to place this crimp tube into the back notch of the crimper tool. That's the one with the tooth. So when you crimp, see how it further separates those wires within the crimp, right? So it makes sure that they are definitely not touching each other within the crimp and then you put it in the front notch turn sideways just to tidy it up a bit right it makes the crimp just a little bit smaller all right i dropped the crimp in the floor <clears throat> okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in with my cutter tool and i'm going to trim off the excess if you've crimped properly you absolutely do not have to worry um, about threading your wire through your beads twice or anything like that because your crimp is where all of the um all of the protection and security of your piece happens not by threading your wires through your beads multiple times okay all right so I've got our crimp attached. Now I'm going to thread on all of our beautiful beads and I'm going to show you the pattern that I used. Now you can, you can do however you want to, right? But this is how it looks in the picture. So I've got a metal bead. I'm going to thread on a metal bead. I'm going to do a pearl. In fact, I'm going to do freshwater pearls. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven freshwater pearls. And I'm going to alternate the freshwater pearls with the metal beads and then we're going to throw in some of these beautiful lapis chips so just a simple stringing project we do have a little wire wrapping to do but not much and that's just a little added accent to this because you guys know how i am i have to have dangles to attach to everything uh, and if that part is just too much for you that's okay <laughs> you can leave that part out it's going to be a beautiful bracelet regardless Okay, so I'm threading on seven pearls with the metal beads in between. Like 
Sam's going to help me up my bead game. I, I'm like, I'm so excited. I can't even begin to tell you. <laughs> All right, there's six. So we're going to do one more. Um, somebody's got a question. Um, so Derry's got a question about, um, about why are guardians and what sizes to buy? So, um, I, I tend to, I'm like Joan, cause I saw Joan's comment here as well. I tend to use, um, hold on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I tend to keep two sizes of wire guardians on hand. And it, I honestly didn't realize until just recently that there are so many different sizes of wire guardians that are available. I didn't realize that you could get them. I'm going to thread on guys. I'm going to thread on three chip beads. I didn't realize that you could get really huge ones. I, I just didn't know. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pay attention to the diameter of the bead stringing wire that you're using. And then you're going to want to go from that measurement over to your wire guardian measurement. And what you're going to want is you're going to want to use a, a combination of bead stringing wire and the size of wire guardian that the wire takes up the most amount of room inside the wire guardian. In other words, you don't want to have a wire guardian that is way too big for your bead stringing wire uh, because that's kind of defeating the purpose. So the purpose of the wire guardian is to make sure that you are protecting your wire uh, from abrasion, right? That happens between the uh, bead stringing wire and any metal that it comes in contact with. Well, that being said, your wire guardian is also metal. So if your wire guardian is bounce, or if your wire is bouncing around inside a wire guardian that is too big, you're kind of defeating the purpose, right? You're creating um, abrasion between the two of those which over time wears away that nylon coating that's on the outside of your bead stringing wire, uh, which can damage the wire and create a failure in your design. In other words, uh, your, your design will break. So you want to be sure that you are making a good, a good match between your bead stringing wire diameter and the size of the wire guardian that you choose. I don't know the exact measurement or size of my, um, my wire guardian here, but I know that it complements the bead stringing wire that I've got, which of course in the kit will be the case as well. Um, but that being said, I have a size that is a bit bigger for some larger bead stringing wires as well, but I generally only keep two sizes on hand. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to, you know, have a, a wire guardian that goes with every single bead stringing wire that I've got, right? Then I end up with like a huge library of bead stringing wires and wire guardians. Um, do they make wire guardians that fit the smaller sizes of cording if you want to use it for that? Yes, they do. They have some really small ones and they've got some larger ones. It's just like your, your crimp tubes. You want all of those things to be in good relation with each other, right? Um, I am seeing Patrick Mahomes's name. I'm also seeing Zach Bagan's name. Like what's happening in the comments today? <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. So I don't know if you've noticed, but this is the pattern that I put together while we were, while we were chatting about the wire guardians. So I put together these beautiful pearls and then I just put in some little pops of the chip beads. Right. And then I'm going to finish with some of the chip beads. Now you can put this together however you want to. I just thought this was a really beautiful layout for this bracelet, right? All right, so I'm gonna thread on another metal bead, okay? I'm also going to thread on another crimp tube and a wire guardian. And this time we're going to use a large jump ring here to attach to. And I'll show you why in just a second, but I'm going to take my wire back down through my crimp and pull. Now, if you've got enough bead stringing wire to go through a bead or two, it just kind of helps to get your crimper tool in there 
you can pull everything from down further. Let me show you what I mean. If I can get this wire back through one of these chip beads, I may not be able to. I may only be able to make it through. So I've got a little short section of wire here. So I like to go through a bead or two at the end just so that I can pull from a spot other than right up next to my crimps and all of the hardware, right? That just helps to give me a better place uh, to pull to make sure that my bead stringing wire is not crossing inside the crimp and my fingers are out of the way so that I can easily get my crimper tool in there. Oh, that's a jump ring, so I don't have to worry to, about doing it directly to that. I can just open and close that jump ring, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna crimp. I'm gonna place that crimp bead in the front notch of the crimper tool and just tidy that up a little bit. And then I'm going to come in and trim off the excess bead stringing wire. Okay. All right. So my attach to my clasp over on this side of the clasp is going to be this larger jump ring here. And the larger jump ring is going to serve two purposes. It's our go between for our clasp and our wire guardian. But it's also, since it's a nice large jump ring, it's going to be a great little place to add some dangles. And that's exactly what I used it for. You could put charms here if you wanted to. Totally up to you. So I've just taken a freshwater pearl and put it on a piece of really beautiful chain. And I've, uh, all of these things are in the kit as well. And a four millimeter jump ring has our connection. So let's do that real quick. And then we'll move on to the next project because we've still got three more to go. So I'm just going to thread that onto a head pin. I'm going to come in with my chain nose pliers, I'm going to grab that wire and give it a bend. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers with that wire running between the barrels. I'm going to take the wire up and over the top barrel of the pliers. Now notice I moved the wire, but not the tool. But now I do have to move the tool to get this bottom barrel of the pliers out of the way so that I can take that wire over to close our loop. So I'm going to rotate the pliers take the wire over and that's going to close our loop. Now, before I do the wire wrap in that space, I want to go ahead and thread this to our chain. So I'm going to take the tail end of my wire, thread it through the bottom link of our chain piece and just pop those two together. I'm going to hold that with my bent chain nose pliers. And now I can wire wrap in that space between the loop and the top of our bead. Okay, when you do that, you want to come in with your cutter tool and trim off your excess wire. So we're going to trim. You need, if you need to tidy it up, you can just tuck that little tail of that wire in. Okay, now I'm going to attach this with a four millimeter jump ring. And I've already done one of them, right? It's already there, but I wanted to do two here. So I'm going to attach that to this larger jump ring. I think this is such a beautiful, guys, I'm thinking holidays. I'm thinking holidays. I'm thinking gift giving. That's what I had in mind with all of our projects today and probably going forward for the next little bit. Um, because I'm thinking about, you know, what are things that don't use a whole lot of beads or materials, but you can make several of to give as gifts. And this is definitely boutique style jewelry right you would pay a lot of money for this if you if you saw this out in the world in the wild if you will um so you know if you can make it who wouldn't want it handmade right gorgeous so this one is in lapis but the other one the other option in the shop is in that beautiful um rhodonite is it rhodonite yeah in the in a dark dark pink it's not a Pepto-Bismol pink. It's, you know, it's a pretty pink. So there's a beautiful bracelet kit, guys. I do love dangles. I just can't help myself. You don't have to do those if you don't want to. In fact, with these, if you wanted to, to make a matching set of earrings instead, just add two ear wires to these. You've got yourself some really beautiful earrings and a bracelet set, right? But I added mine to my bracelet because I got to have all that fun. <laughs> All right, so that was kit number one that's in the shop. Let's move on to kit number two because we've got three more to go. All right, I'm going to speed through this one real quick so that we can get to the other two. So this kit comes in two different uh, two different color variations. I'm just going to go ahead and show you the finished 
in the brown. Look how gorgeous. So these gorgeous crystals and big old freshwater pearls. And I'm talking big. Those are big, large and in charge. So that's one of the colorways and that beautiful combination. And then the other combination is in this kind of black gray. So, so pretty. Albert, that is enough out of you. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So we're going to put this together super, super quick. Okay. So we've got a piece of 22 gauge wire and we've got our beads here. Hold on. Lay everything out. I'll show you how quick these are. So these are super instant, instant gratification, but so, so pretty. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take our large pearl and we're going to put that on a head pin and we're going to do a wrapped loop. Albert does want to help. <laughs> he doesn't, he's, he's in a mood today. He was in a mood yesterday too. He's mad at Cooper, my other dog. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do a wrapped loop here. Okay. And so I'm going to take the wire up and over the round nose pliers rotate take the wire over and now i'm going to wire wrap in that space in between the loop and the pliers and i've got room for about four wire wraps here okay now i'm going to come in with my cutter tool i'm going to trim off the excess okay all right, now we're ready to put the earring together. This is super, super simple, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna thread on five of our crystals. Look how pretty they are. I love them. I love these earrings, like I'm obsessed. So, so fancy, but yet I would wear these with my jeans. I just love sparkle, that's my thing. All right, so five crystals, we're gonna thread on the, the loop on the top of our pearl, and then we're gonna thread on five more crystals. Jessica says, hi, doggos, to Albert and Cooper. They're so silly. <laughs> All right, so now what I want to do is I want to create a loop shape with my wire. So I'm just going to take the two wires and kind of cross those together. Now, you have to manipulate the wire into the shape that you want because it's going to just do that, right? So you really got to kind of open it up with your fingers to really create a, a looped shape so that you have a nice hoop of your crystals. Now we're going to take one of the wires and bend it to the back. We're going to take the other wire and bend it straight up and down just to kind of hook the two together, right? Uh-oh, bent that out of shape there. Okay, now we're going to take the wire that's going to the back and we're going to wrap it around our straight wire a couple of times and you can make yourself a little wire wrap or you can do like a, a little spiral platform it's totally up to you okay i'm going to come in with my cutter tool i'm going to trim off the excess and i'm going to thread on another pearl bead so i've got another freshwater pearl to drop down on top right i really mushed my loop out of shape <laughs> <laughs> I have to kind of re rewiggle that wire into the shape that I want. All right. So there we have our hoop shape. We've got our pearl on the top. And the last thing to do is just do another wrapped loop. Like these are super easy, instant gratification. But again, if you are thinking about gift giving, if you're going to need ideas or you want quick and simple things that are still gorgeous, that's what our Friday, our feel good Fridays going forward towards the holidays is going to be all about. These don't use a lot of materials. You can buy the kits in the shop to recreate them yourself, or you can easily recreate these using things that you have in your own stash, or, um, you know, you can just use these for inspiration later on, right? But gorgeous, gorgeous, simple jewelry that you can put together for gift giving or just for yourself, really. <laughs> all right. All that's left to do is just add an ear wire and they're done, right? You just want to repeat that for the mate. 
And those are the two beautiful colors that are in the shop. So this beautiful kind of gray black, and this one is kind of a coppery brown. So those two are the choices that are in the shop. Super easy to do, but super, super pretty. All right. One last look at those babies. All right. All right. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Okay. I'm saving my favorite for the last, but not to discredit any of the ones I've already shown you. All right. More pearls. So we're going to put together these super quick and easy pearl dangles. Look how beautiful those are, right? So, so pretty. You can never go wrong with pearls. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So we're going to put these together super quick. These have a check glass bead with them, freshwater pearls, and that beautiful textured oval ring. So my textured oval ring, I already have a couple of beads attached here just to save us some time. Okay. I'm just, I'm just trying to to keep you guys from being here forever. And I really want to focus on the next project. There's freshwater coin pearl beads and then your fresh waters to go on either side as well as your check glass bead that's going to hang in the center this one's already been wire wrapped it's clear with that beautiful a b finish to it that's going to hang in the center of our decorative ring all right now i do want to mention so make a note for yourself if you're buying this kit okay there are two sizes of head pins in this kit there are two thicker head pins. These thick head pins are, they're not really thick, but in comparison to the other ones, they are. So you got two normal, regular sized head pins. These are for the check glass bead. Okay. The small thin head pins, these are for the freshwater pearls. So don't use, don't try, or don't use your thin ones on your check glass beads. There's only enough for your freshwater pearls. The reason is, is because the drill hole on these pearls is very, very small. So you need a very fine head pin for these. And that's what I have included. So just make a note. Don't accidentally try to shove one of those pearls on the regular sized head pin or don't accidentally use it up. Um, on your check glass bead. Okay. So I'm going to put the remaining pearls on these head pins, and then we're going to wire wrap those directly to our decorative ring, including our, our coin pearl here. All right. So I'm going to come in with my chain nose pliers and I'm going to give it a bend. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers. I need to make a little bit larger loop uh, because I need to be able to clear the surface area of our component. So you can see with the pearls that are already on here, you can see those loops are a little large. So I'm coming back on the pliers a little bit more than I normally do for my loops. I'm going up and over, rotate my pliers and take the wire over to the other side. Before I do the wire wrap though, I want to open that loop and thread this on to our component. Okay, now bent chain nose pliers are the way to go with this to hold everything kind of out of the way so that you can wire wrap in that space and you don't need any extra jump rings here, right? We're wire wrapped directly to our component. Okay, and now you just want to come in with your cutter tool and trim off the excess. There was only a tiny little bit of wire left. Want to trim as close as possible. And of course, you can go in and clean that up with your chain nose pliers if you need to as well. So that one's going to go in the center. We've got three more pearls to add. So same thing, wrapped loops, bending the wire. Oh my gosh, you guys, the, I completely forgot about the earrings. Okay, wait, wait, wait. They're not sold out. They're not sold out. If you guys will give me just a second, I completely forgot to update the quantity on those. I'm so sorry, but I'm so glad that I looked up. All right, give me just a second. Let me update the quantity on those, you guys. I completely forgot to do that this morning. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Listings, show me. Show me the listings. Okay, I'm gonna update these. I'm so sorry.
Okay, give it just a second and those will be back in the shop. I'm so glad I looked up to see that. Okay, let's get back to the project. Whew. Those did not sell out. Not yet. I hope they will. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead with my next pearl. Okay. And again, I made a big loop so it will clear the surface area of our component. Okay. Coming in with my cutter tool. Trimming off. Gosh, I'm glad I saw that. <laughs> it's funny. I meant to update that this morning because I was going to count how many kits and then I just completely forgot. So there was only one in the shop at the moment. So <laughs> now they're back. All right. Got two more pearls and you can see I'm just opening slightly the loop that I'm creating. That way I don't have to destroy that loop shape when I go to try to wiggle these two together. It just slides right in there. Now when you're doing something that's smaller, right, when you're using a smaller component, you don't have to worry about opening that loop. A lot of times your loop will snap together with whatever it is that you're working with. But when you're working with something that has a bigger surface area, uh, sometimes it'll wiggle your loop into more of an oval shape and I'm, I want to try to keep them as round as possible. All right, I've got one more pearl to add to this and then we'll put this all together. Okay, and then I've got one last project to show you guys. I cannot wait to show it to you. I'm super excited about it. It's so pretty. All right, so going up and over, rotate the pliers, take the wire over to the other side. We've made a large loop and again, coming in with the chain nose pliers, and I'm just barely opening that so that I can very easily slide it onto the component. Okay, I like to grab that with my bent chain nose pliers over my regular pliers, just because the, the nose of those pliers is out of the way, makes it a whole lot easier when you want to get in there to do your wire wrapping. Okay, all right, coming in with my cutter tool, I'm going to trim off the excess. All right, so we've got three freshwater pearls and a on one side, a coin in the middle and three on the other side, right? So we've got this beautiful cluster of just yumminess. All right, so I'm just going to put these together with a couple of jump rings. I'm going to take a large jump ring. I'm going to open that up and thread it onto the component. And before I close that jump ring, I'm going to thread on my check glass bead that's going to hang in the center. And I'm going to thread on a four millimeter jump ring, which is where our ear wire is going to attach. So I'm going to close that back. And using our ear wire, attach to that four millimeter jump ring. And that's it, you guys. Look how pretty. These are so pretty. You can't go wrong with pearls, particularly if you're going to gift. And gifting pearls is appropriate all the time. Birthdays, holidays, Mother's Day. I don't care when. Women like pearls. At least I do. I can't speak for all women. That's unfair. But if you give me pearls, I'm going to follow you anywhere. That's probably a stretch. But I do love pearls. <laughs> I do love dangles. So, I mean, you know. All right. So, that is the Pearl Cluster Earrings Kit that is in the shop. All right. I've got one more project to show you guys, and then we will be done for the day. All right. So, I'm going to sit these to the side. I am going to try on all the earrings for you, though, before uh, the end of the show here. But I do want to want to get on with this the very last project. Now, this one, I... I love, I love them all, but I really, really love this project. So more pearls this time. These are glass pearls in this beautiful green color and antique brass. I'm obsessed with this combination. It is perfect for fall. We've got two pieces of chain here. I'm going to show you how to attach our chain, but we're going to build a beautiful little centerpiece here. So you've got a piece of antique brass. Uh, German style wire in your kit. Okay. And let's see. 
opening up my photos here. Just want to be sure that I make it exactly like it looks in the picture. Don't ever want to mess anything up here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wire, German style wire, very, very thin. So it's going to fit through the, uh, the pearls. Okay, I've got both ends. I'm going to thread four glass pearls onto the wire and I want to drop those down to the center of my piece of wire. And actually, I only want to drop three of those down to the center. This fourth pearl, I'm going to thread it onto one side of my wire, but then I'm going to take my other end of the wire and I'm going to thread it through that pearl going in the opposite direction. So those two wires are crossing within our fourth pearl. Okay. Now I'm very carefully going to pull a little on each side of the wire. Again, I'm trying to keep those three pearls that we added in the middle of this piece of wire. So when I wiggle my wire and my bead all the way down, I've made a little flower, a little four pearl flower out of these pearls. Okay. Now I'm going to repeat that and I'm going to pick up a pearl on either one of the wires. So a pearl here and a pearl here, and we're going to make another flower. So this time I've added a pearl to either end to pick up a fourth pearl, or I'm sorry, a third pearl. And I'm going to thread it on to the wire. And then I'm going to take this through that wire, or I'm sorry, through that bead in the opposite direction. And again, I'm going to pull to bring that down to make ourselves another little flower, right? Okay. I'm going to do another. So we're going to do one more and then we're going to change things up just a little bit. So drop one, a pearl on one side, drop a pearl on the other side and pick up a third pearl. This is the pearl where both wires are gonna cross through it in opposite directions, okay? And again, pull that down, go slow because this is wire. You don't want to, you don't wanna, it's not a race. You'll strip off that outer coating on the wire. So be mindful, go slow. All right, now this time when we pick up our pearls, I'm gonna pick up one pearl on one, but I'm gonna pick up two pearls on the other. Okay. Now I want this one pearl the one so I added two to one and one to the other the one where it's just one I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to go through that singular pearl that's going to be the one where our wires cross because we're making a turn I'll show you what I mean so when you pull the wires now we're exiting our wires are exiting a bead that isn't here on the end but it's here on this inner like on the inside of a flower right on the outer edge of a flower so now we can go this direction so we're going to create a little chevron shape so now i'm going to i'm going to pick up my regular pattern again so i'm going to pick up a bead on one a bead on the other and cross through a third okay so there's our third bead the wire going in opposite directions through that singular bead and now when i pull you could really see where we've we've made a turn in our design. See what we've done? How cute is that, right? So now we're going up this way. So what we're doing is we're creating a little chevron shape out of our pearls and our wire. Yes, D, these are glass pearls. So I'm going to thread on another pearl on one side, a pearl on the other side. We're going to cross through in a number three, right? So there's the third pearl. Both wires are going to go through that pearl in opposite directions. Pull. All right. And we're going to do one more little flower section with our pearls. So three more pearls to go. We've got one pearl whoops, on one wire. If it'll drop down. <laughs> one pearl on the other wire. 
And then we've got one last pearl and cross through and pull down. Okay. Now look, we've created a cute little centerpiece for our necklace. We're not done yet, but we've created a cute little centerpiece here. So now what I'm going to do is I've got extra wire. It's a little excess. So I'm going to trim off. I'm going to leave myself only about two inches on either side. Okay. Now this part is a little tricky. I don't want you to get frustrated with it, but what we need to do is we need to thread through one more bead um, next to the wire. So let's start with the wire that's coming out this direction. Just ignore this one that my fingers are on. Okay. I'm going to take that wire and I want to run it through the, the next bead. So we're coming out of this bead, but I need to go into this bead. So I'm going to just very carefully because there's already wire going through that bead. So you got to kind of give it a little wiggle, right? And you can see there's the tail end of the wire. I'm going to come in with my pliers. I'm going to pull, but I'm going to pull. This is not, since this is not thread and this is wire, I have to be mindful and try to keep my wire in an open kind of loop shape, right? As I pull so that it doesn't pull a big kink or bend into the wire. Okay. So I've just essentially thread through the next bead. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in with my cutter tool and trim that off. Okay. Now I need to do the same thing with the other wire. I'm gonna go through the next bead with that wire. And again, you gotta wiggle cause it's wire, it's not thread. Grab the tail of it with your pliers, okay? And then make sure you're opening that up and making a, a loop shape with it as you pull it through, okay? Trim off whatever is poking out on you, okay? So as long as you can trim it through, I'm sorry, I didn't know if you didn't, if, if I was out of the shot there, but you just want to thread it through at least one bead. Don't want to wiggle it through too many more, but that's what you've got, right? So we've got our centerpiece here. Now we need to turn this into an actual necklace. So I've got my chain pieces with jump rings on them. I'm going to attach those in just a second, but first we want to attach our pendant to this to make it even more fabulous. So I've got a jump ring. I'm going to open that jump ring nice and wide. I'm going to thread our pendant on. And then you can see here in the middle, since this is where we made our turn, we have a clear middle between two beads. And so we can wiggle a jump ring, maybe easier to do the jump ring first and then add the pendant, but I can place a jump ring between those two beads, add our pendant, Tight little squeeze. Hold on. <laughs> Hold everything together here and wiggle that little pendant on there. It's hard because I'm not, I'm not up close to everything. All right, there we go. Now we're going to close our jump ring back and you'll see this is going to hang beautifully right in the middle. Look how pretty. So, so pretty. So now all we have left to do is attach our chain pieces and you've got two chain pieces in the kit and all the hardware. So you've got your jump rings and your clasp right? And you just want to open up your jump ring, thread it on. Again, it may be easier to do the jump ring and then add the chain, but I'm just going to thread it in a space between two beads, attach my chain, close that back. So there's it's attached on one side. Let's do the other side. And then that's it. Again, this is a project that does use a ton of materials, right? 
but the results are gorgeous and it's definitely gift worthy. It's definitely worthy of wearing to a holiday party if you want to not give it away as a gift, right? Just keep it for yourself. How pretty is that? Perfect for fall. Definitely going to go all the way through fall and into the winter with that. You can't go wrong with green. And then, of course, you can wear this in the spring, too, because uh, it's green. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. All right, I'm going to put this on a bus so you can see what it looks like hanging because it's even more beautiful hanging. I'm going to show you the earrings and then we will say our goodbyes for the day. Let me turn you around and hope that you guys stay on the tripod. <laughs> that was not the case yesterday. I need to adjust everything here a little bit. Okay, so. Let me show you the necklace first, since that's the one that's on our mind, right? This is the one that we've just put together. How oh, pretty. How oh, <laughs> would be pretty if I could hold it straight up and down. And of course, in the kit, you've got plenty of chain to work with. So you can trim this down and make it whatever length you want it to be, right? But so, so pretty right? It just, you can't go wrong with pearls. I don't care if they're glass pearls. I don't care if they're check pearls. I don't care if they're real pearls. Pearls are always a good idea. <laughs> always a good idea. So there is that. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, let's not forget our fabulous gemstone and freshwater pearl bracelet with the dangles that could be earrings instead, right? <laughs> Totally up to you on that one. And then we had we had two pairs of earrings, but they actually come in three colorways um, or two two colors on one. So I'll try these on for you guys so you can see them. So there are our fabulous little earrings. And of course, that's the gray and then this beautiful copper. So either one, so pretty and sparkly and just gorgeous, you know? And then last but not least was our pearl clusters. And again, pearls. Pearls are always a good idea. Always a girl. Uh, always a girl. Always a good idea. So, so pretty and fun, right? Sparkly goodness. Lots of dangles. Lots of movement and all of the jewelry today. I hope that you guys have enjoyed these projects. I also hope that you have enjoyed taking a look at the maker mixes. Don't forget, we've got a brand new contest lined up for the month of September. So any of the maker mixes from today going forward into September, you can use those, create a beautiful piece of jewelry using the maker mixes and share the picture with the hashtag maker mixes September to enter into our contest. Uh, we've got the August contest coming to a close September 6th, though we will be announcing the winner on the 10th, right? Uh, so be looking forward to that. I'm already putting together the prize. I'm excited. I think this is a fabulous way to share goodies, you know, and some of my favorite things with you guys. So, all right, that's it for me, you guys. Don't forget about the schedule change starting next week for September. Um, I will be working on new things for you guys. Don't forget to set your reminders for Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. We'll have Sam from Sam's Beadbox here. We're going to be putting together some gorgeous earrings that are all about purple. But you can do these in any color, right? Um, and checking out Sam's last beadbox from August. So. It's going to be a good time. You guys have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. Hardwired group. I will be seeing you guys tonight at 6 p.m. with our special guest, Neelay Patel, talking about jewelry photography. Guys, the Hardwired group is open for enrollment right now. So if you are on the fence and haven't decided if you want to join the Hardwired group yet, you have an opportunity for the next few days to come and enroll. If you are going to join please make sure that you send a request to join the group and you answer all of the group questions. If you don't answer the group questions, we can't get in touch with you to send you your invoice. So make sure if you've sent a request that you answered the questions, okay? And we'll be sending you your invoice soon and getting ready for the month of September. All right, join. It's so much fun. You'll love it, right? You'll love it. Our projects are fabulous. And we always have a good time. All right. So I'll see those of you in hard wires later. The rest of you, I will see you guys either on Saturday for my Michael's class or on Tuesday next week at 1 p.m. with another fun project. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I love you guys. Bye.